Merry Christmas. Or depending when you're watching this, Merry Christmas. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope you're having a wonderful day nonetheless. It's Christmas. I like Christmas. I get excited by Christmas. And every day I... Every day, that's not right. Every year, I try and pick a fairly Christmassy topic so that we can have a, a video. And I record it a little bit in advance. I'm a little bit croaky. Hopefully, by the time Christmas comes around in, as I record this, three days' time, I will be less croaky. But today, what I want to talk about is the top five ice Pokemon in Pokemon. And you should consider this an official list. You should consider this to be inarguably correct with absolutely no room for any movement whatsoever, and you should consider all other opinions on other Ice-type Pokemon to be objectively wrong. Or is it me making a fun Christmas video? Who knows? So we're going to count down the top five Ice Pokemon, and because we are largely a TCG channel here, we're also, as we go along, going to mention the best, or at least some notable cards that have featured those Pokemon, because it's my video and I want to and it's Christmas and I'm excited. So in at number five, we've got Regice. And if you follow this channel, if you watch this channel, you probably know that I have a bit of love for the Reggies. Me and the Reggies, we got a thing going on. And it's beautiful. And I love it. Now, there have been some interesting Reggies over the years. One that did see a fair amount of play back in Gen 6 was the Regice with Resistance Blizzard. Did 70 damage and prevented all effective attacks done to this Pokemon by Pokemon EX. It was a fun card and it saw a bit of play with Vile Plume to block item cards. And it saw a little bit of play with Manectric who could accelerate the energy rather nicely. It was fun. But let's face it, the best one is Legends Awakened Regice. Legends Awaken Regice was a beast, and I loved him. Now, I'm not impartial here. I played it in my Don Fan list, and I will not apologize, both for playing it in Don Fan and for being extremely not impartial. You see, what you could do with Regice was you could discard two cards from your hand and force your opponent to switch their active Pokemon. But at the time, we had things like Spiritomb, and Spiritomb sucked if you were playing against it. Because the Pokemon Keystone Seal turned off item cards. But in decks like Donphan, you might be playing a lot of item cards, which means Spiritomb shut off your deck. So you play Regice, and you make your opponent switch their active, and then you go about your day. Yes, if your opponent dropped two Spiritomb, they could just switch from one to the other, but that didn't always happen. So we're fine. The thing is, Regice kind of lost me top 16 at UK Nationals. Because I made top 16, and I was playing against a deck with Spiritomb, and Spiritomb came out, and I went, well, that's not a problem. I can deal with this. I'm, I'm just going to use my Regice, but my Regice was prized, and I went, well, that's all right. I play Azalf to grab a Pokemon out of my prizes. We're okay. And my Azalf was prized, and I lost game three in a, a game I'm pretty sure I would have won otherwise. Boo hits, etc. I still love this Regice, and I still love Regice. It's a big block of ice. And what says Christmas like a big block of ice? Now, in at number four, I've actually changed this since I've written the list. I'm putting Ice Q. And I love Ice Q, but I don't think Ice Q's earned a top three ice Pokemon yet. I just don't think it has. And I love Ice Q. I love that it's basically a penguin with a block of ice on his head. It makes no real sense in terms of design. But maybe that just makes me love it all the more. Ice Cube is one of those Pokemon I didn't really know about. And I played through Pokemon Sword initially. And Pokemon Shield is when Ice Cube came in. So I was seeing pictures of this penguin thing online. And I'm like, where is this? It's not in my game. It made me sad. Maybe if I'd have known this, I'd have played Pokemon Shield first. But that's a moot point because I didn't know it. All I know is Ice Cube's amazing. As a Pokemon. In the Pokemon trading card game, well, let's just say Ice Cube owes us a real card. Because as it stands at the moment, we got like nothing. There is a regular Ice Cube with the ability Ice Face, which takes 60 less damage from attacks when you got full HP. Which I will say, it works with the video game, it's just not amazing. No, I mean, that's nice, to be fair. It gives you an effective HP of 180. It's still not great. And then free energy, 70 damage, plus 10 to each of your opponent's bench. It's fine. 
And especially if you use like Frost Moth to accelerate energy, bear that in mind more on that later. Well, kind of. It's alright, but it's never proven to be good. Ice Cube V, and to be fair, I love the artwork on both the Ice Cube cards. Cold Absorption lets you heal 30 damage every time you attach a water energy. So again, Frost Moth allowing you to attach as much as you like is cool. Because you attach lots of energy and you heal lots of 30 damage and yay! But then again, we, we got the attack Blizzard. 120 damage plus 10 to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. It's consistent. Because it's basically the same as a non-V Ice Cube. But I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. This is not... um. This is not a Pokemon that has been blessed with good cards yet. Maybe in the future. But I'm trying to show you the best cards from these Ice Pokemon. And Ice Cube ain't making it easy. In at number three, we've got Vanillux. You got a bit of a bump. Vanillux was number four. But I went, no, that lovely little ice cream. It's going to be number three. And the thing is, right. Firstly, it's a literal, actual ice cream. How cool is that? And secondly... It's actually had a whole bunch of really good cards. And even the Vanillas cards that aren't good, most of them are at least interesting. There aren't many bad Vanillas cards. There are just ones that are a bit less interesting than others. Now, Vanillux, I adore. It is literally an ice cream. And you evolve up through the stages of just bigger ice creams. Little ice cream, big ice cream, double scoop. <laughs> Which is genuinely amazing. I love Vanillux. Now, you could argue Vanillux should be more of a summer Pokemon because that's when we eat ice cream. But no. Winter, baby. Winter. Now, the best Vanillux is actually the one that has the best artwork as well. It is the one from Noble Victories with Double Freeze. Flip two coins, 40 for each heads. If either of them were heads, the defending Pokemon is now paralyzed. But we had Victini at the time. So you literally had to flip double heads twice, i.e. quadruple heads, in order to not get paralysis here. And it will be played with the aforementioned Vileplume to Ability Lock. And, you know, it's got top four at UK Nationals one year just because could not flip tails. It was awesome. Now, we've had a bunch of other interesting ones. The Vanillux that came around in Next Destinies had a nice little ability that made you switch your active or one of your bench and your opponent, i.e. you both switched, which was kind of interesting. And the Plasma Vanillux had Chill Max. Flip a coin for each energy attached to this Pokemon, 60 damage for each heads. Even the most recent Vanillux we got in Darkness Ablaze. If it's active, you may flip a coin if heads paralysis. And admittedly, Hasn't seen really any play, but it's still a really nice, interesting card that can paralyze with an ability. And I'm kind of in on Vanillux. It's an ice cream, an actual literal ice cream that has had multiple good cards over the years. And you can ask all kinds of questions about in the Pokemon world, do they just eat this like ice cream? And how barbaric is that? And the answer is, that's the kind of thing in Pokemon that... We try not to think too much about, because the answer might disturb us. In at number two, we've got Snom. How can it not be Snom? Who doesn't love Snom? Monsters. That's who doesn't like Snom. Monsters. I adore Snom. Snom is one of those Pokemon. I'm playing through Pokemon Sword and I'm going through and I get near the end of the game and there's Snom running around. And I'm like, what's that? What is that? It's Snom, ladies and gentlemen. That's what that is. Who didn't see Snom the first time and just fall absolutely head over heels in love? Well, I've already told you who didn't. Monsters. Now, we've only actually had one snom card up till now and shall we say there's not really much to it 50 hp is very low one colorless energy 10 damage even an eternal optimist like myself talking about a pokemon that i love so much as i love snom has a difficult time finding something good about this card but you see in shiny star v over in japan there was a new snom which incidentally was both a shiny and a regular one of the few new regular cards in shiny star v and what it did was it let you search your deck 
for a basic Pokemon and put it onto your bench. Which, obviously, a lot of the time, what you would really do here is go and get another Snom. Because if you're attacking with your 50 HP Snom, your 50 HP Snom is probably getting KO'd. So, having a spare one that your opponent can't KO at the same time, probably a good thing. And it's actually significantly better. Now, of course, Snom evolves into Frostmoth. We've already mentioned Frostmoth a couple of times. Frostmoth lets you attach as much water energy as you like to your benched water Pokemon. And that is a whole bunch different. We like Frostmoth. Not as a Pokemon. It's a weird big fat Ice Moth and I don't like Moths. They freak me out. But I like Snom as a Pokemon. And I like Frostmoth as a card. And I think if we put them together, we get something which is startlingly close to perfection. But at number one, it's obviously a Lowland Vulpix. And that's obviously a lie because it's blatantly Mamoswine. Man, I love Mamoswine. And anyone who's watched more than a couple videos of mine will know that Mamoswine was number one. He's literally in my logo. Which makes things awkward because it means I can't sell merch with my logo on. But because I don't own the copyright, it's blatantly owned by Pokemon, which is awkward. But I don't know. Let's worry about that another day. Mama Swine, put it this way. I've been in official Pokemon videos on official Pokemon live streams and told you that Mama Swine is my favorite Pokemon. Now... If you need to ask why, you'll probably never get it. I think the, the reason why Mammoth Swine is so awesome is something that should be obvious. And I think people who look at Mammoth Swine and don't instantly go, that's the best Pokemon I've ever seen, probably are never going to understand why it's so cool. Now, it is very important to note that Mammoth Swine may or may not be a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I made a video about it. I'll link it in the description. It's weirdly become one of the most popular videos on my channel, partly because it got a shout out from a content creator way more popular than myself and proves a thing I've said many, many, many times before. Everyone helping each other out means that everybody wins. It's a good thing. But that video's got over 30,000 views. It's ridiculous. And it all came because at my old house, my father-in-law walked in one day, saw my Mama Swine plush, I'm a grown-up, honestly, and I asked, hey, is that a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to make a video about it. In terms of best Mammoth Swine cards, I think we actually have to give it to Mammoth Swine GL. Now, Mammoth Swine GL was one of those SP Pokemon, but it was largely the Pokebody Icy Aura. It put one damage counter on each active Pokemon between turns other than water Pokemon, so Mammoth Swine was fine. And it spread a bit of damage, and that was quite nice. Even then, the attack never worked. 60 damage, flip a coin, it heads 10 to each of your opponent's bench. Even though it's an SP Pokemon that can use energy gain, it is still miles away from being a decent attack. Which is obviously a little bit sad. But I showed you a Shop It Donk deck just a few days ago on this channel, which would essentially hit and run, and then when you ran, you would put a Mamoswine in the active and get a bit of extra damage down, and I'm not saying that this was good. I'm saying it was the best Mamoswine we've had. The one from Stormfront was always endlessly fascinating to me, and I have tried to make this work. Now, it was for a really awkward attack cost of water fighting double colorless, but it did 60 damage plus 10 more for each Swinob on your bench, 20 more for each Pile of Swine on your bench, and 40 more for each Mamoswine on your bench. 180 if you had four Mamoswine out, which you never did, but that's not the point. The fact that you needed to flood your bench and the fact that it was such a ridiculous attack cost stopped it ever being particularly viable, but hey-ho. I also need to mention here for no particular reason that Mama Swine totally had a theme deck. Back in Triumphant, Mama Swine actually had a theme deck. You have no idea how happy this made me. Yes, obviously I bought this. Why would I not? Man, I love Mama Swine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that is about it. I think we've talked about the top five ice Pokemon. For those of you that may be wondering, and I've already had this question from somebody as I'm recording, I, I sent a good friend my list to peruse. Why no Lapras? Lapras would have been number six. Lapras was very close to making the list. Lapras is cool. Nobody dislikes Lapras, but I'm afraid I, I looked at my list of top five ice Pokemon and... 
I couldn't cut anyone for Lapras. And for that, I'm sorry. Or I'm not. I don't know. Merry Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. I hope wherever you are, you are having a wonderful day. I hope you're having some time off work. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I hope that even with all the rubbish going on in the world at the moment, and there is a lot of it, you are finding a way to enjoy the festive season, have a load of fun, and see the people that you want to see, whether that's in person, online, or somewhere in between. I hope you found a way to have a wonderful time. So have a Merry Christmas. Enjoy yourselves. And of course, the most important thing as always... And I think this year it is more prevalent than ever. Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Oh, and give me your list of top five ice Pokemon in the comment section. I would genuinely love to spend a bunch of time this evening on Christmas Day reading your top five list of ice Pokemon. Primary type, solo type, secondary type, don't really care. Give me your list. I would love to hear it. Thank you very... In fact, I will even list... No, link... In the description, if I remember, fingers crossed I do, a list from Cerebi, lovely site, lovely dude, so you can go and get a nice list of all the ice Pokemon, make your top five list easier to make. Thank you very much for watching, have a lovely Christmas, look after yourselves till next time. My name's Ross, and you've been watching a very festive PTCG Radio.